I don't know, it was it was just too much. <laughs> my head was all over the place. Like it's Friday, man. The next day is my event. So if you can't do with this venue, I can't look for any other venue. Let's just sort this out and go. If we even take this to court, I guess I'll do it because yeah. <laughs> So yeah, we had the whole back and forth. It stressed me out. I won't even lie about that. It, it, it really stressed me out because I had made full payment. That way you are covered and you didn't have to go through all the stress I went through because Charlie, it was too much for me. It was it was really, really too much for me. And all of this happening like two weeks before my actual event date, it was just too much. So yeah. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Merry Christmas and happy holidays. I hope you're enjoying your holidays. Um, if you're new here, my name is Naku Alete and you are most welcome to my YouTube channel. However, I would really appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button below to join my amazing YouTube family. And to my returning subscribers and viewers, thank you so much for your support. You lot have just been amazing and I really appreciate your support. This month has just been amazing. Like it's just been one good news after the other, after the other. And it's just been so, 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 so amazing. So we got, we hit 2k subscribers like earlier this month. And then I think the next day, yeah, it was actually the next day, yes. The next day, we got monetized. And I don't think I would have been able to do this without the support of you guys. So I really, really appreciate your support throughout my whole YouTube journey. Thank you so much for watching my videos, engaging with my content, commenting, liking, sharing. I do appreciate it. Thank you so, 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 so much. So in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you some things that I did which helped me to cut down on stress during the preparation process like my traditional marriage preparation process as well as stress during the actual ceremony itself and some things that i didn't do which caused me to stress a little bit during the preparation process as well as the ceremony itself so if this sounds like something you are interested in then don't go anywhere stick and stay till the end of this video and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below so this is more or less like tips to help um cut down on stress during um, your preparation process for your traditional marriage or your white wedding so all the points i'll be given are actually out of my experience during my preparation process as well as the ceremony itself so i'm not going to be mentioning the names of the vendors i had these encounters with because i'm not here to spoil anyone's business However, I'm also here to help whoever is about to plan his or her traditional marriage or white wedding to actually help you to cut down stress or to make the whole process a bit more stress-free. So I'll try as much as possible not to cross any lines here. So first of all, I'll say do not assume. So let's take for instance, you've contacted a vendor um, for whatever be it um, photography, makeup, decor, whatever it is. And you've asked the vendor to send you their, their rates or their packages. So the vendor sends you his or her rates. You go through the rates. And in my case, I didn't have my traditional marriage in Accra. I had it in Takwa. So I get the, the what's it called? I get the packages or the rate card or the contract or whatever i don't know how to call it so on this document the vendor has listed what he or she offers and then um, the categories so probably he or she has like this category this category this category with their respective rates and then beneath that he or she goes on to state terms and conditions in my case, I didn't have my traditional marriage in Accra, I had it in Kappa. And one of the first things that I asked every vendor that I contacted was, are you available to travel? Are you willing to travel to Takwa? Because I know Takwa is quite a distance from Accra. So that was like one of the first things I asked every vendor I contacted. So I contact this vendor, he or she sends me the contract rate card whatever we call it and i asked the vendor are you available and willing to travel to tapa he or she said yes so you send me your contract in their contract after the the categories he or she has terms and conditions which in the terms and conditions 
it stated that you need to provide transportation and accommodation if the the occasion is not taking place in Accra you need to make um, a 50% deposit and pay the rest before the date of the event and a couple of other stuff I had to provide transportation and accommodation to this particular vendor let's call this vendor vendor A I had to provide transportation and accommodation to vendor A and bear in mind in Ghana the most common means of travel is by road so I assumed by saying transportation and accommodation should be provided the vendor vendor A meant by road so this is what I knew and this particular vendor here um, or let me say this particular aspect of it was so I had like three aspects that I wasn't going to compromise on like my on my traditional marriage day so those particular things I made sure they were sorted out like early enough I paid for everything way ahead of time so I sorted this out and in my mind by transportation it's by road now I think two weeks to the event I messaged vendor A to sort of let let vendor A know how we are conveying to Takwa and all of that because um, we had cars going to Takwa. So I messaged vendor A telling him or her that okay, so there's there are cars available. I've made provision for you to join one of the cars to Takwa. We have a driver, you just sit in the car, drive you to Takwa, and that is it. Vendor A tells me he or she thought we're going to go by air. Okay, first of all, there's no airport in Tapa. Number two, nowhere in your contract or on your documents states that travel is by air only. Because I had other vendors who specifically stated in their contract that travel had to be by air. Like they stated that um, flight and accommodation. So they didn't say transportation, they didn't leave it like open like that. They specifically said flight and accommodation so over here nothing states that it has to be by air and in my mind the most common means of transport is by road there's no airport in Taka, so where is the flight coming from and also we have cars available to take you to Taka. so why would i now come and spend money for flight and even if we were going to go by flight it would have been double work because now you have to take a flight from Accra to Takrade. Then from Takrade, what happens? You rent a car or what? Uh, and I think vendors should also be very clear on whatever it is that you're trying to communicate. If you feel you travel just by flight or just by air, state it in your, in your terms and conditions. Don't leave it as open as transportation. Like, how am I supposed to know you travel by air only? So yes, do not assume make sure um, whatever it is if you don't understand or if it's too open seek clarification let the vendor tell you what he or she means by that because in my case now it was just two weeks to the to the event and it got me stressing because we had to go back and forth back and forth about this whole thing i was not willing to to pay for flights because i didn't budget for that it's not like i couldn't afford it but everyone is going by road so why is it that only you <laughs> like really <laughs> really because with this particular vendor yeah he or she stated very clearly in the terms and conditions that you have to make 50 percent and then 50 uh, percent deposits deposits are not refundable this was my problem like you specifically stated that deposits are not refundable because this was very important to you so you stated it in your terms and conditions so if traveling by air is also very very important to you or if that is the only means by which you travel i expect that you would state that in your terms and conditions as well but this wasn't there and i wasn't like really i, I don't think i was i was being unfair because it was not there it just said transportation if we even take this to court i guess i'll do it because yeah <laughs> So yeah, we had the whole back and forth, it stressed me out, I won't even lie about that, it, it, it really stressed me out because I had made full payments and Vendor A was not willing to give me back my money. So this takes us to the next point, which is do not make full payments, I think so. 
due to the experience I had, I would say do not make full payments, especially when you are paying like way ahead of time. If you are paying like two or three months before your like actual occasion day, I would say do not make full payments. This is why I say so. So on vendor A's document and the terms and conditions, he or she specifically stated that um, deposits are not refundable and also stated that you need to make at least 50% deposits to sort of book that particular date so that he or she doesn't um, take bookings from any other person for that date. So that date will be blocked out for you. So you make at least 50% payment, then uh, you make sure you make the rest of the payments before the date of the event. So yes, that was what was stated and then um, deposits are not refundable. So ideally, I was supposed to make a 50% deposit. But so because this particular aspect was one aspect that I didn't want to compromise on, I made full payment. And bear in mind, I paid for this three months before the actual event date. So I made full payment only for it to be like two weeks to the event and this whole back and forth came about and now I couldn't get my money back because payments are not refundable however i did i was supposed to make a 50 percent deposit and i paid everything so if you are saying deposits are not refundable can i at least have that extra 50 percent that i paid then we talk about how to solve the actual 50 percent deposit that was supposed to be the deposit but this like i don't know we had a lot of back and forth it was it was just stressful for me so yeah i would say do not make full payments like stick to the the 50 percent deposit that way you are sort of covered some way somehow so that if things don't go the way you want it at least you don't have all of your money locked with someone you are not going to use so yeah i think it's fair due to the experience i had i would say make a 50 percent deposit as at the time you are booking and when it's getting close and you feel like you're on the same page with the vendor everything is sorted out you go ahead to make that extra 50 that way you are covered and you didn't have to go through all the stress i went through because charlie it was too much for me it was it was really really too much for me and all of this happening like two weeks before my actual event date it was just too much so yeah the next thing will be to have a plan B, a backup plan. So this is also with vendor A and then um, what other vendor? So let's call that one to vendor B. So I had this encounter with two vendors. So because vendor A was doing all of this, going by flight, not wanting to give me back my money, now I had to look for other options. I had to look for a backup, you get it? And then I had a second vendor who also I don't know it was it was just too much <laughs> it was it was just too much so this second vendor uh, it was due to some personal reasons the second vendor said he or she wouldn't be able to make it so I should look for a backup now I looked for a backup, I searched for a backup, I got the backup, as soon as I got the backup, I paid for it, it's like I made full payment. So here's the thing, for Vendor B, yeah, Vendor B is my friend. So Vendor B offered to do the thing for me for free. And so I didn't even budget for it, I didn't add it to like my headache. It was, because in my head it is sorted, because my friend is doing it for me. And two weeks or yeah two weeks to the thing was it two or three weeks to the thing i really don't remember but when the b comes to say he or she won't be able to to do it for me anymore because of personal reasons i cannot say over here but like yeah, some personal reasons so he or she wouldn't be able to do it for me anymore so i should look for a backup and this was like two or three weeks to my my event so i looked for a second person like I, I looked for someone else and then straight away I paid for it because it was like two or three weeks to my actual thing so there was I didn't have enough time it was that close I had to look for someone and to have this thing sorted out so I got someone I paid for it right away and within the week like that same week of my event 
this um, backup plan, plan B for vendor B, messages me to say he or she is not feeling too well, like he or she has been sick, and so if um, he or she is not well by by Thursday, I think it was a Monday, so if he or she is not well by Thursday, he or she wouldn't be able to make it. So um, he or she said to me, I should look for a backup just in case he or she is not able to make it. And this was like four days. <laughs> This was like four days to my event. Like I was just, I don't know. I was just not having it. I was just not having it. But this was the person's health. So I, it wasn't something that I really had control over. It wasn't something that he or she also had control over. So it was a lot for me. It was really, really a lot for me. So yeah, all of this back and forth, back and forth. So make sure you have, you have uh, a backup plan. Even if you are not paying the plan B, at least um, engage the person, message the person, contact the person, let the person know your event date and like just leave the person hanging in there like I'll get back to you sort of thing. You are there, you are not there, you've confirmed, you've not confirmed, sort of. So that in case your actual um, vendor fails you, you have someone to fall on. It's not now that you are going to start the whole process of searching for another vendor and you are under so much stress, like, you know. So yeah, just get a backup plan. That's that's what I feel would be, like, ideal. So that in case all of these things that happens to me happens to you, you at least have someone to fall on. And you take it from there. I, I believe that would ease the stress a bit. Yeah. Though, it's still stressful. <laughs> so the next point is, give your vendors... Um, a date that is at least a week ahead of your actual event date so for vendors that are like doing stuff for you not like those that have to be there in person because those ones obviously you have to give them the correct date for them to be there but for those that are getting things done for you for for instance like outfits maybe your fan your your shoes um what else what else yeah stuff like that so give them a date that is at least a week ahead of your event. That way you wouldn't find yourself wanting. So that at least a week before your actual event date or even two weeks before your actual event date, you have all your outfits sorted out. You have your accessories. You have your fan. You have whatever you need to have for your big day is ready. It is not now that three days to the event, then your outfits are not sorted out because you gave the, the designer the like, actual date. And yeah, like you find yourself wanting. So give them a date that is at least a week before your actual event date. So I had mine on 14th November, but for my outfits and a few other stuff, I gave the vendors um, 7th, yeah, 7th November, which was like a week before the actual event date. So they had to deliver them to me before the 7th November. Do you get what I mean? So that way you give yourself some room to actually have everything sorted out before the actual event date. And it gives you that time to, to make sure everything is in place, to make sure you have everything before the event date. It is to help you ease stress because this whole thing can be so much stressful. And these are some of the little things you can do to ease stress because Charlie, you can't come and kill yourself. <laughs> So yeah, give them a date that is at least a week ahead of your actual event date. That way, if the person knows that, like you gave, like for, for instance, for mine, I gave them 7th. So for 7th, they know that they would have to deliver the thing to me even before the 7th. Okay guys, so my next point is to save at areas where you can. So um, planning your traditional marriage or your wife's wedding involves a lot of things. It also involves a lot of cost. So if it's possible for you to save at certain areas, why not you can save the money and use it for something else even if it's not in relation to your wedding you can use it for something else so it's it's necessary if you can save by certain areas it's important that you save so in my case for instance i had 14 ladies following me and i had to make um ropes for them the bridal ropes the one that they wore when we were dressing up so i had to make bridal ropes for them so um I went on to Instagram, I saw a couple of vendors, I messaged them and I think the cheapest one I got amongst all of the vendors I, I messaged, um, she was charging 90 cities per robe and mine was about 
250 cities or so i really can't remember but i was above 200 cities i think so yeah i told her i'll get back to her i told her i hadn't confirmed the number of people um, following me and all of that so i would get back to her so i think one friday because i messaged her way ahead of time i think i messaged her two months before the actual event so one um friday i was there she sends me a message that oh she wants to confirm if I, I still want to go ahead with it and that she needs to go and buy the what's it called satin from Accra. then it clicked that oh it's not already made they actually buy the satin to to make the the ropes and i remember that um satin sells for i think eight cds or seven cds a yard so I sat out to do some calculations and I noticed that if I'm going to be paying um, 90 cities per row and I'm buying 14, that's like a lot of money. I could save some money if I buy the satin myself and get someone to sew for me. Then I remembered my auntie is a seamstress and I, I messaged her. I knew she was going to do it for me for free anyways. So as soon as like that thing clicked, I just cut out the whole part of me buying the ropes because that was a way for me to cut down cost and to save some money so i got the satin myself um the what's it called yeah the satin the fabric itself so that was the only thing i actually had to pay for in relation to the ropes and i gave the fabric to my auntie and she did it for me she made everything for me and even my own robe that i wore she did it for me at no cost even for mine for my robe i didn't even buy the the fabric I think my mom bought it or my auntie bought it and they did it for me so if you can save at certain areas find other alternatives and see which like weigh the options and know how you can save in certain areas because in my case i noticed that if i'm going to be buying from this person and she's charging me 90 cities per row while um what's it called the fabric itself is like eight cities per yard and for each person, you let's just say each person uses um, two yards, right? Yeah, two yards. I saved some money over there. So yes, that is it. Another, another aspect that you can also save is um, venue. That's if, um, what's it called? You have like a big compound in your house, then it's perfect. You can actually save some money on um, venue cost. In my case, from the onset, the plan was to do everything at home. The plan was to do everything at home. But Charlie, when I saw the way things were going, my my family, I actually have quite a huge family. My husband also has a huge family. So looking at the way things were going, my my house could have still accommodated everybody, but we didn't want a situation whereby it would be as if there are two parts there and all of that, because we wanted everything to, to go on nice, you know? So we had to look for a venue but if you have like or your parents have like a huge compound a big compound where you can actually accommodate people then why not go ahead do it in your house all of these decor people can make the compound look as if it's not even your house you know what i mean with all of those decor pieces and all of that so yeah that's another great area or great uh, yeah great area to save cost um venue so if you have um your parents have like a huge compound then there's no point going to get a venue for them to charge you like three thousand ghana four thousand ghana two thousand ghana like really so yeah that's another area where you can save so yeah aside these two areas if you have like any other areas that you think that oh if i do this it would save me some money compared to buying or doing that just weigh the options and save some cost and also please it's not just about saving cost compare the quality as well so make sure that in as much as you are trying to save cost it's of good quality and it's of like it's what you really want it's not just about saving cost and at the end of the day you're not happy on your big day like then it makes no sense <laughs> so the next point is to actually get your decor people to see the venue of the event before the date of the event so in my case my decor people are from takwa day i didn't get them to come to takwa to see the venue before the the actual date so this was what happened like i mentioned initially 
we thought we were going to do everything at home so um we sent them videos of our compound everything they asked us to send measurements and all of that which we did and i think a month before yeah a month or so before before the event we noticed that we can't have it at home because of the numbers so we had to find a venue so we got a venue and we did the same so yeah i sent them pictures and videos of the venue and all of that just as i did for the house so when i sent them the the, the pictures and videos actually the venue yeah some parts of it slopes so the depot people noticed it and then they asked me how slopey is the place and i was like oh is this a small part of the place that slopes so they were like okay cool if we have like a wide um flat area or like a leveled area to work with then that's fine so that was it everything was sorted now so the depot people came um on friday that was like the friday before the event so they came from Takara to Takara on the Friday. They got to Takara um, late morning. I went to see them. I got to the venue. They brought their stuff. They unpacked all of their stuff. So the people who were supposed to put up the pergola complained about the place, that the place looks too much. And so they might not be able to put up the pergola, blah, blah, blah. Oh, good. And now my head was all over the place. Like, it's Friday, man. The next day is my event so if you can't do with this venue i can't look for any other venue let's just sort this out and go so yeah i, I spoke to them i was like you know what this is the venue i have I, there's no way i can look for any other venue like now we've already communicated to all those coming that this is where we are having the event so we have to let this work that was what i told them i begged them it says they are failed this is like use your expertise and then make it work for me so yeah and i had to treat them right like it's not like i wasn't going to treat them right anyways but yeah um there's one thing about human beings it's just about treating people right you know after all of this they were like okay they will try i'm like boss it's not you try matter like there's nothing i can do so we have to make it work so this is not you try matter but they were a bit reluctant i say and hey, yeah, yeah and all of that but you know it is what it is you have to make it work so um they were supposed to go like they were supposed to go with me to the house to have breakfast but then they said they had a lot of work to do so blah 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 so i had to go home get them breakfast like i served them good you know i served them good by the time i realized the thing that they said they, it wouldn't be possible it was over possible <laughs> Right now, I realized the thing that they said it wouldn't be possible, it was about possible. Like, they, they had sorted it out. And it's, it's all about how you relate to people. So, like, I'm drifting from the topic, but like, yeah, it is also important. Treat your vendors right, okay? Because even with my vendor A, yeah, the one that we had the whole going by flight and all of that, back and forth, I won't refund you your money. I ended up using vendor A anyways. We, we, some way somehow sorted it out however i incurred additional cost but yeah we sorted it out and vendor a was thinking that because of what happened between us the whole back and forth vendor a thought i wasn't going to treat him or her right um on the day but like really what do i what do i gain from it nothing so yeah just be nice because at the end of the day you need them you need them to make your event a success. You need them to make sure that you are happy on your big day. You need them to make sure that everything goes well on your big day. So now back to back to the topic. So yeah, get your decor people to actually see the venue before the actual day, so they know the nature of the place and how they are going to work around it. It's not that on that day that they've come and they'll tell you that you can't mount your pergola here and you are stressing. You are stressing. So yeah, make sure. You get your ven your decor people to see your venue before the actual date. I think that is what I should have done because that credit to Takwa is not really that far. I could have had them come to see the venue for themselves to know the nature of the place, and that way, like we are all on the same page, like they are good. However, they managed to sort it out for me, which I was really happy about. So the next point is get an event coordinator if possible so i didn't get an event coordinator and i wish i had trust me 
so this is the reason why i didn't get an event coordinator so um the people who did my decor um were from takrade or are from takrade so they had to come from takrade to takra um unfortunately i i don't know of any event coordinator in takra and i didn't want the same people doing my decor to handle coordination because then it would be like two different assignments to one person i wanted the decor people to concentrate on decor make sure the decor was on point and then if i had the coordinator the coordinator would have been to make sure that everything is in place you get what i mean but i didn't know of any coordinator in takwa and yeah so it meant i would have to get a coordinator from Accra to takwa and all of that and bear in mind i had a lot of things to deal with i sent all my vendors were actually not from takwa my makeup artists, my uh, photographer, videographers, they were all from Accra. So I had to provide transportation accommodation. And my decor people were also from Takrade. I had to provide transportation and accommodation for them as well. So I was sort of cutting down, cutting down on cost because I didn't think coordination was too much of, of a work to do. So I didn't get a coordinator and I wish I had because the coordinator would make sure everything is in place. It's not like things really went wrong, no. But then there were just a few things that um, didn't go the way I wanted it. And I feel if I had had the coordinator, the coordinator would have made sure everything was like in place. Because all of my friends that could have actually coordinated for me were part of the bridal team. And yeah, my mom was busy, all of that, all of that. My little sister was part of the bridal team. And so yeah, I wish I had a coordinator to do all of those little, little things for me. But thanks to other family members, I got like... A few other things sorted out they made sure everything was in place and all of that but i still wished i had the coordinator though everything went on well like generally i was okay with my my events like i jammed i properly jammed i had fun and i was i was happy at the end of the day i was happy but then i wished i had a coordinator to make sure those little little things were in place yeah so yeah these are the tips i have for you out of personal experience out of the experience i had during my own preparation process i hope these tips will help you plan your big day very well it'll help you to like um cut down on the stress associated with planning your big day because trust me this whole thing can be stressful and these are just a few things you can do to actually ease down on the stress i hope you you take these tips into consideration when you are planning your big day and i hope you found this video very very helpful don't forget to hit the subscribe button don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful don't forget to comment and don't forget to share this video with your friends if there's any other thing you'd want to know about my preparation process planning the ceremony itself anything that you want to know about it just drop it in the comment section below put your questions right there because i'll be doing another video where i'll be answering all your questions related to planning my big day and yeah i hope that helps so drop your questions and see you in my next video bye